Hi, welcome to... I'm all shaggy, I'm fine! Without my glass? Oh, I'm holding them. <laughs> my glasses. Hi, welcome... <laughs> welcome to Tech Talk, the art or whatever makes a good DJ. I can't remember, I'm DJ Patricion. How are you? Welcome to episode... Is it three or is it four now? Wow. I was just thinking about what we were going to talk about today, and wow, we've got a lot uh, to do. Maybe this will be a special 45-minute episode, if you can deal with my talking. Um, maybe we'll have an intermission. <laughs> that would be good. Um, we'll see how it goes. I want to talk about... I want to do... I want to talk about acoustics today. Um, I also want to start with a story, um, which I think is a, it's a great story, uh, back from when I was in Boston, about uh, someone who was a mentor of mine, but I don't think she or he knew it. And uh, all things DJ, of course, and uh, the acoustics, and we are, of course, going to listen to, you got it, another track. Have we been, like, counting? Two, three, four. I'm not, I'm not gonna, like, stop doing it until you, like, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's a wrap, 32. It's 32, I can... You know, when you're on the radio, you're on the bus, listen to someone's, uh, not so much true in hip hop and house, but, you know, everything, well, hip hop, dance music, your dance tracks, even your, like, your, your love songs, 32 beats, 32 is the magic number, I'm telling you, 32, 32, 32, 32, alright, so we're going to be talking about acoustics, I'm going to do some acoustic, I'm going to tell you a story from Boston, I'm going to do some acoustic exercise, and some acoustics, and we're going to listen to a track, um, so, again, where do we keep our drinks? Do we keep them, like, right next to the computer? No. Do we keep them not anywhere near? No. I'm, like, all the way. I have to keep mine, like, way over here so that nothing happens to your beautiful equipment. Um, story from Boston. And this is an important story. Um, I... Medicinal purposes. When I on the coffer, sorry. <coughs> when I lived in Boston, as you recall from my uh my bio, I moved to Boston when I was 16. Inadequate parents. And I was gay, because you're gay. I, uh... Where was I? I just did that. Um, when I was living in Boston, when I was just starting out as a DJ, um, there were many vinyl stores. It was great. There was, like, Newberry Comics, Tower Records, Boston B, um, always the, uh, uh, where's the place where I used to, like, commit piracy every week? Uh, I can't be any more specific than that. <laughs> and, um, there was a record store in Copley Place called Vinyl Connection. The proprietress was the one and only, and she's on SoundCloud, Carol Mitro. Hi, Carol. It's, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, what she used to call me? She used to call me the, uh, uh, well, I don't know. Are you gonna buy something? 
Honey, I got, I got, got all day. What do you, are you going to buy something? Like, what can I help you with? I'll help you with whatever you, what kind of music do you like? And then her, like, her sidekick, Tom, would come out and be like, yeah, you like disco? You like high energy? I got some nice, like, uh, Kylie Minogue back here. You like Madonna? Yeah, honey. And honey, I don't got all day, but you know, like, I, you, I can get you anything you want. I can order anything. I know people in really high places and low ones, too. Anyone lays a hand on your records? I know people who break fingers. Yeah, yeah, I can get you some disco. I can get you some... Honey, I wish I'd been wearing my diapers, because, like, I wanted to pee. Very nice people, but, you know... Honey, I only, like, buy records for, like, the gays. You know, I'm not like other record stores. You know, I, we, I, this, this is like the gay record store. Yeah, you know, I got some nice, like, uh, Madonna and some, like, uh, Susan. <laughs> it took me a while before I had the guts to go on it. This is like, we, 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 like, sell to the gay DJs here. Yeah, you gonna buy something? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I haven't got all day, you know? Like, you want something? Yeah, well, what are you into, honey? What do you like? You could buy that, you know, I see that you've been looking at that, you could buy that, you know, that's $12, you know, you got $12? <laughs> I think, uh, um, Carol and Tom, Tom specialized in the disco, Carol, uh, you know, special, got a lot of, like, uh, UK house and some, some German techno and, uh, some, some like, Kiyoki and stuff from, like, LA and, uh. You know, Carol was a former art teacher in Acton, Massachusetts, who, um, story goes that she, uh, left it all behind to open a vinyl store in, uh, copy, uh, no, she left it all behind, and then she worked at this famous, famous bar club called the 1270 in Fenway, and, uh, she, it was like a, that was like a popular dance club, that was, that was, it was kind of like alternative, like, uh, there's Lansdowne Street, and there's like, uh, um, the Ram, I don't know, going to a whole Boston history lesson, but she was, uh, and then she had a job at Chaps, which was like the splash up here, you know, on Friday nights, right next to where her vinyl store was, in Copley Place, which was, her rent must have been pretty high, she was a great location, right next to the Copley Plaza Hotel, and, uh, God, the tourists must have gone in there by mistake. You know, they must have been in for a big surprise. You know, <laughs> you gonna buy something? <laughs> they run out of there in a hurry. <laughs> it's cool. It's kids after school, you know, going there by mistake, she probably take the baseball bat behind the counter <laughs> that left that, that that she laid on top of like one of the like uh, one of the ledges that said, "Don't even think about it." Underneath it. Anyway. Over time, I got to know Carol, and, uh, you know, she, she gave me a lot of, like, tips and lessons and things. She helped me get one of my jobs that um, is, is the most near and dear to my heart in Providence. I mentioned last week, the Yukon Trading Company, um, a leather dance club uh, where I worked for three years, the longest residency I ever had, and uh, I still think about it. Um, you know, it barely closed, like, several years ago. Uh, big fire, you know, um, I did what I had to do, you know, they had to go, no, I, I didn't have anything to do with that, um, but, uh, Carol was very, you know, I don't, <laughs> you gonna buy something? <laughs> that was Carol, anyway, um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> You'll notice, <laughs> you'll notice periodically throughout, maybe with the, my videos every now and then, I'll be doing a lesson, and I'll be telling you about, like, be mixing or programming, and I'll just pause and I'll say something like, You gonna buy this? You gonna, like, pay me for this video? <laughs> I need to make money doing this. Are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna buy something? <laughs> no, I won't do that. Okay. So... We're going to do a little something with acoustics. Let's see how I'm set up to show you. First of all, I always do this lesson with my students. Okay. So first, 
We're going to do something with sound. So, you hear me? I'm sitting in front of the computer, right? Okay. How do I sound over here? I'm behind the computer now, okay? Now I'm over in this part of the room. What do I sound like now? 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 And I'm back. So that's a little exercise that I do. <laughs> I did it the best I could because it's wise everywhere. That's, I kind of combined it this time because <clears throat> I kind of combined my monitor speaker and my acoustics. <laughs> well, that's actually was more of the acoustic lesson. Consider, yeah, that's the acoustic lesson. Consider the acoustics of that, of what I just did. Just think about acoustics for a second, and you need to like rewind this a few times, obviously. So right now, stop the video. Go back. <laughs> and replay. Right now, stop the video, go back, and replay. I want you to listen for the differences in sound, space, time, distance. I want you to listen for the time, the difference in time, space, and distance. I want you to listen for the time, the difference in space, time, and difference. Makes, makes a big difference. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that I want you to consider is um, how that works. That's, that, 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 makes, that makes a big difference um, in how you are seeing uh, doing sound in space. Now, what I can do with the monitor speaker is um, the same thing. Um, and the purpose of that last lesson is also for you to notice how your senses make you feel like certain sounds take longer to reach your hearing or your ear. But you reach them all at the same time. That's why in you know, a DJ booth, you know, you have, or on stage at a concert, you notice those speakers all along the front. so they can hear themselves in real time. Because if they didn't have those speakers there, they wouldn't hear, they, 
they wouldn't perceive to hear themselves in real time. Sound travels really, really, really fast. Like it's up there with the speed of light. But our bodies, our ears, the way we perceive things, because we're human <laughs> and we're not mechanics or robots, we're the slow ones. Okay? We're slow because we're made out of vascular tissue and bones and things. So we need to bridge the gap, eliminate the delay. So when I was going all, all over the room doing that, it was not to frustrate you, but to show you that, that there's sound coming from all different angles. And you have to be aware of it, but you also need to know which is the true one. And by that, you need to have your monitor speaker as close to you as as possible. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like I'm too simplistic, but so let's um, do an example, like for monitoring. Um, let's put on a song that we all know. No, I'll put on a song that I love. It's this dude, it's this dude from Belgium, his name is Paradox with a K, lovely young guy, um, he does this song called Voices, he does Voices, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. and we're gonna like, Well, this one's like voices. <laughs> I can't find the voices. Okay. So now you hear it, okay? Okay, so let's say. Let's say this was our floor speaker, meaning like on a dance floor, okay? And it was our monitor speaker. But the farther I get away from it, the harder you see what's going on, you know what I mean? Now I'm talking, now I'm talking, now I'm talking, now I'm talking, now I'm talking. It takes long. 
stronger to reach our ear, so it seems. But it, it doesn't really reach our ear at the same time that it would if it were right here. But sound is... I am hearing it just as soon when it's right here. Okay. I am processing the sound just as soon and just as quickly as the speaker being here. And if the speaker is all the way back here, it just seems that it's taking the sound longer to reach my ear when the speaker is back there. But it's not true. It's not true. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Count, count. I know that you've been counting 32, so you know. See? Little samples are being added. Okay. It's called Synthopia by Speedy J. Okay. Bye, J. business. So, just a little bit of a lesson on sound. It's hard to do it when you're not like a sound engineer, sound expert like me. I played the piano for six years. Um, acoustics, well, I'll tell you this. When you have, when you have a broom, there's a, there's a, uh, an old club in New York called the Saints, I mean, <laughs> called the Limelight, and I always use, like, the Limelight and the Roxy as an example, the Limelight inside is a church, have you ever been to, when you're inside a church and you see how, it's like, you know, it's a cathedral inside, and they're really, really, really high ceilings, but they're kind of like peaks and valleys. You know, you have crevices, and um, there's lots of places for sound to go. You know, there's, there's like like uh, sculptures and things on the ceiling, and it's very high. There's lots of little nooks and crannies and areas and places for the sounds to bounce all over, like echoes and, you know, it's wonderful. It's a fucking monitor sneaker nightmare. <laughs> oh, the Lord, sorry. Um, monitor, having a monitor speaker in a case like that, having a couple of them, like a dozen, is like 
highly important on the team. But, you know, it's just um, the sound and the echoes. And actually, I just am thinking, like, I don't know. Uh, it, it could be an acoustical nightmare, absolutely. Well, well, with certain kind of music, I like a warehouse sound. So I like the music to kind of sound like um, like an echoey, boxy kind of sound. Um, you know, metal surfaces have a different kind of uh, reflective sound. You know, from like wood surfaces and you know, the dance floors. Um, no, I was just thinking that, because I, I had a theory about, like, the, the, uh, the limelight, but, like, I think I just shot it down. Um, uh, alright, <clears throat> one of my, uh, pet peeves of things I have the most to say about is programming. And let me get back into programming again. I kind of made some funny examples the first two episodes about programming, but uh, I'm going to be serious about it for our last five minutes here. Um, having a program. Well, I will start out by giving you a test. And if you pass, you have the luxury of continuing to watch my series. If you don't, I'll plant an HTML virus in your computers and you'll never be able to watch anything ever again. Get it, got it, good. Scenario A is, I would say to people, <clears throat> which do you think is, there is a correct answer and there is not a correct answer. Okay, so, I'm going to a gig, and so you have to say, is it like selection A, or is it like selection B, like which is, what do I do, like I have to choose one or the other. I'm going to do a two-hour guest spot at um, Club ABC. So, um, should I bring? And it's it's back in the vinyl days. Should I bring um, several crates of records um, so that I can, you know? Um, to a larger audience of people and take requests and, um, you know, play what people want to hear? Or should I be, since it's a two-hour set, um, just take maybe a crate of records and, um, entertain and stay within a, uh, a minimal range of, um, sound so that I can be true to myself uh, as the entertainer um, that I was hired to be. Is it choice A or choice, is it choice B? Tick tock, tick tock, Clarice. Little, uh, oh shit, I fucked up the jokes, I can't remember. Little, what is it? Oh. oh yeah, I got it. Which is it to be? Choice A or choice B? Sorry. Little Catherine's waiting. <laughs> Most people say choice A. Wrong! It's choice B. Because I am a, an entertainer and I am performing a program. I used to see these DJs like do a two hour set and they come in with like 20 crates of records. Whores! Slots! 
no backbone at all. You know, so they can play everything for everybody and just be like a fucking jukebox and have no spine and have no, like, self-respect and, like, not be performers, just be, like, fucking, like... You know, fucking like, you know, like hyenas, like, like, not, not artists at all, just like fucking like, like, you know, fucking like, uh, like, like dingbat, like jukeboxes. So most of you got that wrong, so sashay away, you know, go away, you know, you're out. I'm sorry, I'll be the same. Those of you who got it right, no, you can say. Those of you who got it, uh, those of you who got it right, choice B, um, good. And um, that's all the time we have for today. This is Sapphire. Um, again, just remember, the correct answer was I'm a performer. I don't need to bring like fifty thousand crates of records. If I can play for two hours, that means I can play. About 25 records, so I'll bring 30 or 40. You know, I paid to do a job. I'm programming. I know the gig. I've researched the gig. I know the people who go to the gig. I'm familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the music that's popular right now. And most importantly, I'm familiar with who I am. And I know who I am as a performer. And I know the people who come here to see me are expecting me and will end up hating me. If I spoon feed them the music that I think that they need to hear, but will end up loving me for believing in them enough to take a risk to play something new and to believe in their ability to grow. Bada bang. I am DJ Perdicion, DJ David Marshall. Thank you so much for Tuning in to Tech Talk, how to become the best DJ in the world.